All right, today we're going to be analyzing the Jeff Ruby stakes. Your eventual winner, Tis the Bomb, is the number seven. Your eventual second place finisher, Tawny Port, is the number five. And those are the two horses we're going to focus on in this video. So I'll let you watch it right now. Tis the Bomb, the seven. Tawny Port, the five. And they are racing in the 51st running of the Jeff Ruby Stakes. Good beginning for all. Quick start from the outside for swing shift. Also, great escape is flashing speed. And from between those two, as expected, Dallajack Chief is forwardly placed. Tawny Port came away racing in the fourth position. Cabo Spirit is fifth early. Tis the bomb. Hovers to the outside of that one in six as they take on the first turn. Stolen base from between horses towards his inside is Royal Spirit. A link for the back to Red Run, who's about two or three in front of Constitutional Lawyer. And Rich Strike is last of them all. They work around the turn with six furlongs to go. The first quarter of the Ruby was 23 and one. The leader, Dalla Jack Chief, just from swing shift. Down on the inside, Great Escape is third as they continue to run up the backside. Deep on the course, there goes Tis the Bomb to engage from the extreme outside. It is Tawny Port. In between horses, sandwiched is Optigogo. Down along the inside, Royal Spirit is next. A half mile, 47 seconds flat. The leader still, Dalla Jack Chief and James Graham show the way a length and a half to swing shift. From between horses, Cabo Spirit to the inside. There goes Tis the Bomb, who blasts up to the outside of Tawny Port. Those two moving together as the half mile, 47 seconds flat, just outside a, a quarter to go here in the Ruby. Three quarters, 11 in one, and they stack up three deep, and Tawny Port comes calling for the lead. Dalla Jack Chief is being implored for some speed. Tis the Bomb to the outside in third, and Stolen Base has kicked it into gear. He's going to kick wide for the drive. Top of the home stretch of the Jeff Ruby. And tis the bomb forging to the front. Tawny Port under a full out drive to the inside in second. Up the inside, still fighting on. Dalla Jack Chief late on the scene. Down the center comes Opti Go Go. 116th to go. Tis the bomb is still there. Tis the bomb indeed. Wins wrapped up the end by almost two and a half. Tawny Port was second. The running time for Tis the Bomb, 148 and three. And tis the bomb, a perfect two for two on the synthetic. All right, as you can see, the Jeff Ruby stakes was pretty cut and dry tis the bomb he basically just followed tawny port all the way around just sat about a length off of him um, made a swooping four wide move to pass him on the turn and then just uh you know drew off nicely tawny port run very game to be second and the field was fractured uh just just well beaten in behind these two I mean, these two were so much the best, it wasn't funny. Both had clean trips. Still, as good as both of them are, um, the ground, obviously, Turfway Park is a tapita surface. So the ground was, a, you know, really the thing that you have to talk about about this race. Because we're analyzing these horses with the Kentucky Derby in mind. Obviously, the Kentucky Derby is on dirt. Obviously, this race here is on tapita. Two very different surfaces. And in the case of the winner... The winner, Tis the Bomb Sire, was, a, you know, strictly a grass horse. Uh, the mayor was a grass horse. And judging by the way he ran in Florida in his prep race, which we'll watch now, I mean, it's very likely that he's a grass horse, too. All right, we're going to take a look at Tis the Bomb's most recent dirt race. It was the grade three Holy Bull at Gulfstream. He's breaking from post position number six. Uh, now, Tis the Bomb did run twice in the dirt before. He was seventh in his debut on the dirt, and then he won a race that was rained off the grass at Ellis. He, in fact, he won it by a wide margin, uh, but the race got a real slow figure. So this was kind of a spot in the Holy Bull where you figured uh, Kenny McPeak would get a, a good look at uh, a good look at how Tis the Bomb handles dirt against real legit competition. The troubling thing about this performance is that Tis the Bomb had no apparent mishap in the race. He had a fairly clean trip, and he still, you know, not without a straw in his path, did no running and was beaten, you know, more than 20 lengths in this race. And he showed signs during the race that he really didn't like the dirt. Anyway, he's post position number six, saddlecloth number six. I'm going to let you watch it now. Racing in the Holy Bull and simplification was off slow. 
From the rail, Galt comes out firing. The gray, White Abario, working over from the high draw. They land 1-2 from Cajun's Magic, who's down at the inside, while third, up on the outside, Giant Game, striding forward into fourth, ahead of race favorite, Mo Donegal. Then back mid-flight for Tiz the Bomb. He's three wide at this stage. Outside of him in simplification, who blew the start. Second last is Eloquist, and the trailer is Spin Wheel. Field separated by eight lengths as they complete an opening quarter behind Galt, who settled in up front. He leads three parts of a length. White Abario flanks him and races from second. Two and a half clear of Giant Game, who's now up into third. At the rail, Cajun's Magic is there. Fourth is Mo Donegal angles to the clear. Tis the Bomb is in the clear already, outside of him in simplification. Eloquist is toward the rail and still held up at the back. Is spin wheeled. The quarter time was 23 and four. They race to the half mile point. It's still Galt in front. He leads a half a length after a 47 and one half mile. From the outside, White Abario's had a good trip. He's racing in second. Cajun's Magic is together with Giant Game third and fourth. Up to the outside, Simplification has Mo Donegal bottled up. Three back to Spin Wheel, who gets started outside of Tiz the Bomb. Eloquist drops the last as they round the far turn. They race to the first finish line here with White Abario, now even with Galt at the 5 sixteenths. From the outside, Simplification is next. Giant Game not firing his fastball today. Mo Donegal's going to need to do a ton better than that. He's warming to the town but he's six lengths off the lead, and that lead is held by White Abario. Off the turn and the stretch drive, White Abario working with the short stretch. He's three on top. Simplification is running a huge race. He's up on the outside trying to get into second, but the Holy Bull goes to White Abario with authority. He wins by five in the end. Close then for second. Mo Donegal or Simplification. Galt is fourth, and Cajun's magic to complete your high five. All right, some signs that a horse generally doesn't like the dirt. Uh, you'll see them carry their head real high and almost look like they're climbing. You know, and th that was the case here with Tiz the Bomb. He, he down the backstretch, we'll run it here. You can see he's uh, he's the number six. And going into the first turn and then down the backstretch, you see him with his head. He's He's got his head. He's just carrying it high, and it looks like he's kind of climbing a bit. See if you notice it. Uh, that's generally a sign that, that they're not handling the dirt well, or maybe they don't like the dirt in their eye. I don't know the specific reason, but you see a lot of horses with this action here like this that do this, don't run well on dirt, and they get on grass or synthetic, and, you know, it's just magically like, like they were touched by a magic wand. They perform so much better on grass and synthetic than they do on dirt. So... To me, and now this is Gulfstream's dirt, which is a you know a little more speed favoring. It's a little tougher for closers to handle than Churchill's dirt will be. But you see, I think he's got the yes. This is him here with the white cap and the red star. Um, see, see how he's kind of carrying his head high and climbing. Uh, that is a sign that he's not really handling the surface well. Basically. You know, he probably doesn't like the dirt being kicked back in his face, and he's just spinning his wheels over this surface. So, uh, unfortunately for Tiz the Bomb, we said his sire and dam were both grass horses. He's a great grass and, and synthetic horse. I mean, a really, really good three-year-old on both grass and synthetic. But on on this dirt surface... You, you know, you just can't try. The, the, how would you bet a horse in the Kentucky Derby with the kind of dirt form that this horse has? I mean, he's tried over it. You, you see the rider here just going on all out riding, and he is spinning his wheels as the bomb is. I mean, it, it's, it is tough for closers on this track, uh, but they, you know, they generally don't, if they can handle dirt, they generally don't back up like he backed out of it here and you know just with no no trouble no apparent mishap he he just you, you know kept going backwards got beat 20 plus lengths with no excuse come right back in four weeks kind of typical time and run the uh, you know a really nice race on the tapita and winning a stake race at turfway so with tis the bomb unfortunately for him Hey, if Churchill Downs, if they install Tapita in the next, you know, week or two, and they run the Kentucky Derby on Tapita, bet all your money on them. But they're not going to, they're not going to. So, the, um, obviously, the Derby is going to be run on dirt. And Churchill is, of all the dirt tracks, for whatever reason, I honestly have no reason why, don't understand why, uh, but 
Churchill Downs dirt track is a little more friendly to grass and synthetic horses that hate dirt than most other dirt tracks. Now, what I mean by it's more friendly, instead of getting beat 20-some here, maybe he'll get beat 12 in the Derby. Uh, but Tis the Bomb is a throwout for me on dirt. Love him on grass. Love him on synthetic. He's not my cup of tea on the dirt. Now, Tawny Port, who was second in the Jeff Ruby Stakes at Turfway, post position number nine, saddle cloth number nine, in the Lexington Stakes at Keeneland, comes back in two weeks, just two weeks rest, to win the Lexington Stakes, and we'll watch him do that now. And they're off in the Stone Street Lexington Stakes. There goes Strava. There goes We All See It. We All See It to the lead. And here's Major General now moving up from between horses. Tawny Port is up close. Dash Attack is five lanes off the rail in fifth, heading into the first turn, but right up there pressing the issue as well. Strava between horses has a head in front. Major General saves the ground to the inside, now takes the lead by a neck. Dash Attack joins them, now three wide around the turn in third. We All See It tucked away neatly in fourth. In due time is fifth. Tawny Port is sixth up on the outside. Ethereal Road is seven. Howling Time is in 8th. Call Me Midnight is ninth up on the outside. Skate to Heaven is in 10th. And a gap of 7 more lengths to Midnight Chrome, who's last. Opening quarter went in 23.85 seconds. Major General, the leader. Major General leads it by a half length. Strava, second, three quarters of a length. Dash Attack is third up on the outside at the midpoint of the back stretch. We all see it. Fourth and in due time between horses. Fifth, four lengths off the lead. Joined by Tawny Port to the outside after an opening half mile in 48.01 seconds. It's over to the far turn now. Major General leading Strava by a neck. Gap of two lengths. Dash attack third. We all see it. Fourth to the inside. Tawny Port is wide in fifth. In due time is sixth in between horses. Call Me Midnight has to go wide along with Ethereal Road is between horses. That pair, sixth from the front. Top of the short stretch. Major General leads Strava in second. Tawny Port third. Ethereal Road goes to the outside in the fourth position. Dash attack has dropped back into fifth. Tawny Port, Ethereal Road trying to come after Strava and Major General in due time is looking toward the inside. Tawny Port to the lead. Tawny Port with the lead. In deep stretch from Major General. In due time looking to the rail. Major General is fighting back, but Tawny Port the leader. Tawny Port for Ron Giroux to win the Stone Street Lexington Stakes. One minute, 45. So that's Tawny Port winning the Lexington uh, for Brad Cox. Now, he only had one prior dirt start before this. Uh, in, it was in at Fairgrounds against Epicenter. Uh, Tawny Port had a pretty wide trip this day, uh, but in a race against Epicenter, I believe it was the Risen Star, he was about five wide on both turns, just a hopelessly wide trip. So uh, good performance here by uh, Tawny Port. Boy, he's going to have to step up a lot in the Kentucky Derby, but I would take him over Tis the Bomb in the Derby. If I had to pick between those two horses in terms of uh, which, which one I'd want out of the Ruby, for the Kentucky Derby, Tawny Port is the better option than Tis the Bomb, but both of them are going to be very unlikely to be on any of my tickets.